Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I'm joined by my esteemed co-hosts, uh, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Um, and we are also interviewing uh, Rigel, otherwise known as Coinshaw NZ online, uh, discussing Coinbase's yeah. IPO and much more. Um, so stick around to hear the news. Now, first off, uh, before I uh, introduce, well, introduce you even better, uh, Rigel, uh, Ricardo, Jerry, how are you guys doing this week? I'm doing fantastic. Nice. Good to hear it. And Jerry, how are you, you feeling? Feeling high like an all-time high. <laughs> Fantastic, man. I'm liking it. Yeah, the price action is looking good right now. Although I'm sure by the time this goes out, we'll have like dumped half or something. But right now, it's all looking pretty good. Uh, that's cool. And yeah, and Roger, before um, I ask how you're doing, I'll uh, introduce you to our audience. So Roger was a full stack developer, Bitcoiner, um, and uh, as per his Twitter handle, uh, international man of death metal mystery, uh, hailing from uh, New Zealand, uh, well known for sending a uh, Bitcoin transaction without cell network or internet connection. Uh, how are you doing today, mate? How's it going? Yeah, good, good, good man. Just uh, working away and, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, surviving, surviving. Surviving and thriving. I like it. Fair enough. That'll do it. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I guess what we'll do is we'll kick straight into uh, the yeah the news this week, and I've got to say the top piece of news is is completely going to throw everyone off here. It's to do with Bitrefill's merch release. This is the first time I've ever done a plug on this show before. Um, check out the if you can see, check out this fantastic T-shirt of uh, Kryptonaut resting on the beach, and you've got the Bitrefill logo here. Um, anyone out there is listening, this should all be live by the time this goes out. Um, so. Head over to our Twitter and check it out. You can you can pick some up. Stand up a little so they can see the design. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. There Pretty go, amazing, guys. bro. Amazing, and that's designed by our very own Jason, who we had on the podcast last week. So, uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll skip past the uh, the shameless plug now. Um, so yeah, um, first off on the news this week, it's going to be drum roll. Pretty obvious. Coinbase has IPO'd uh, as of Wednesday. Um, and I think it reached, uh, I think it reached a hundred billion at one point, or it was, it got pretty high anyway. Um, and it got bigger than quite a lot of banks value, which is quite interesting. Um, so instead of the banks buying Coinbase, it's that thing of our uh, Coinbase is going to, is Coinbase going to buy some banks, <laughs> um, now, which is amazing, uh, what crypto has done, but yeah, um, I guess, What's I, I'm very neutral, I think, on this whole topic. I, I've seen a lot of hatred for the whole situation and a lot of pro the whole situation. Uh, I'd be interested to hear what each of you guys thinks, to be honest, because as I said, I'm quite like I have two minds completely, which make me quite neutral on the subject. Um, so <laughs> I think I'm going to want to hear what Jerry has to say first. So, um, Jerry, go ahead, mate, and tell, <laughs> tell us your opinion. <laughs> well, um, pretty much the same. I'm well, I'm, I'm going to say I'm leaning towards um, pro because um, I think this, this pretty much validates. Um, yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> this pretty much validates uh, Bitcoin um, in the eyes of the public. Like it's the ultimate, you know, you know, validation that people have been looking for. And I think at this point, an ETF is not very far. Okay. Nice. Well, yeah, for the US and UK, because US and UK don't have one, right? But Brazil and Canada, and I think a few other countries do. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. But because I mean, like, I, despite what everybody might think, I think US, the US is, you know, pretty huge deal. Yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough. It's true. Uh, Roger, what are, you, what are you thinking on the whole situation? Are you kind of, uh, what's your thoughts? I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not particularly a big fan of the, you know, like the super regulated element of the of the sector if you, if you know what i mean and i think like what coinbase is doing is to my mind largely against the ethos of kind of what bitcoin what it you know what it really stands for you know um i mean I, like, like obviously it's bullish in the sense that you know numbers go up and and um that uh you know this it's, it's another sign of like kind of legacy adoption if you like all those kind of things there but uh, you know to me what, what what's what's really at risk here and you know i think this full cycle in particular is a turning point about it about um you know, it's that like Trojan horse meme of, right, of like, uh, you know, Bitcoin getting bigger and being used by companies and things like that. It's like the Trojan horse of us, if you like, sneaking in the door and, and, and taking over. But, you know, I do, I do think that that dynamic is, is, is like a two-way street, you know what I mean? Of um, You know, if Bitcoin is you know, 100%, uh, you know, you can say the extreme example, it's all on exchanges, it's all KYC. 
um, you know, all the, the off ramps require um, uh, ID or whatever like that, then that to me that isn't Bitcoin and, and the uh, kind of point of difference or you know the real value of what, what this whole thing's about is the lost. Um, so I mean, like, man, it's a hard it's a hard thing to do. Like I, ideologically, I'm I'm very much against these kind of companies, against any kind of KYC or whatever. But there's some sort of middle ground of uh, you know I was talking to someone about this last night actually about like this this girl she's quite new to Bitcoin but she's all very into um, trying to get it no KYC and do things right. And I was trying to say, well, if you're brand new, by the time you do all the research, you get this right and you finish chasing your tail, the price is probably going to be at least double where it is now. And I don't pretend I know what the perfect answer is, but, you know, there's, there's something to be said of like, if you just get your hands on this stuff now, um, sure, you, you might have made some privacy bundle ups, but I'm, I'm kind of more inclined to believe that, you know, actually having your hands on it rather than waiting to get it, you know, and get it, you know, perfect you know, is which one's best? You know, I, I don't know the answer. I'm kind of kind of leaning a little bit that maybe um, you know that maybe there is a little bit more wiggle room on the on the, the side of hey, just you know, if if they have to use the old relay to get on board, then it's better than not getting it in the first place. But uh, yeah, not not, really, not much of a subtle answer, sorry, but yeah, I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. So. No, I got you, man. Like he went into kind of like a little bit of um, another side of it, which is true, though. It, 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 which is exactly where my mind at is like, OK, on one side, awesome for Coinbase. Love to see people succeed. Love to see the crypto industry kind of dominate, uh, even if it is in a traditional financial area. But then there's obviously the other side of me that's like, uh, but, you know, Bitcoin's doing great and crypto's doing great. So great that a crypto company then had to go to the old fashioned regulated legacy system to raise money to then it's like, really? Could we not have done this mm. another way? Like a more forward thinking way. So yeah, I've definitely got two minds uh, for certain. So I'm with you on that one. Like, but what you someone's, said about- Someone's going to do it. Someone's going to do it right, man. You know, someone's going to do it. And, and you know, if, if Coinbase was to be the full people who did it and then kind of became antiquated dinosaurs because they didn't do a more- decentralized version in soviet <laughs> sounds good to me you know yeah and like congrats to brian and everything like good, good on them i suppose like that yeah they're doing what they want to do they're doing it well they're making money can't hate on it but as i say i, I have definitely have that view that's like slightly anti and an ideological standpoint so i'm kind of with you on that one um i guess ricardo what's your what's your thoughts are you going to be the opposite to jerry or what well, i'm interested to see how this is going to go ricardo what are you what are you saying i think overall it's it's a positive but Coinbase, first of all, isn't a Bitcoin company. They're a shitcoin company. Um, <laughs> they've turned their back on Bitcoin a bunch of different times. So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, this morning, we, I did an interview um, for a Spanish podcast that we also did for BitRefill. And the guy we interviewed, uh, his name's Juan Rodriguez from Bitcoin e Crypto. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. And he yeah. brought up a really interesting point, which is Coinbase has been a Bitcoin startup for eight years and they've only accumulated you know for the whole time they've been involved in the space and as an early adopter or pioneer kind of business four thousand bitcoin really isn't a whole lot to show for how long they've been involved um when you compare it as as juan did to microstrategy or tesla these are companies that have been just barely dabbling with bitcoin for a few months and they already have exponential amounts more in Bitcoin holdings than Coinbase does, which I actually thought was kind of shocking. Um, observation really says a lot about the significance of Coinbase's IPO to me. That's a really good point, man. Like I, um, I didn't know they only had four thousand BTC. It's not that's like less than got hacked from Bitfinex back in the day. <laughs> so that's to say, that's less than that. So wow, okay, yeah, I, I guess that's a pretty interesting perspective. Um, so yeah, I think I think generally overall, I think we're all pretty. I mean, we're all kind of like, yeah, this is this is cool for them and everything, and you know, I'm not gonna no one's gonna hate on it here, I suppose. But uh, there is that kind of element of it'd be nice if you know um, there was another way, I suppose. But yeah, as you said, Roger, like you know, people, someone's gonna do it. <laughs> so if it wasn't them, yeah. would it have been Kraken? Red, Kraken? Kraken? Would it have been Kraken, or would it have been any other exchange? Who knows? Probably would have been. So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I guess congrats to them and everything. It seems to have gone okay so far um so yeah i guess uh is there anything else anyone wanted to discuss quickly because i to be honest i wanted to just get on to um interview side of things quite frankly I'm, I'm interested to talk to our fantastic guest here but anyone else got anything they wanted to bring up before we do so i vote for the interview also let's do it okay right okay let's uh let's get kiwi let's uh let's 
let's get into it. So I guess, um, well, okay, right. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask you a question just to start us off here. Uh, just a nice introductory question. Um, so yeah, first off, uh, you're from New Zealand originally, right? As far as I can tell from the accent and from your Twitter That's handle. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> sweet as, sweet as, nice. Um, in fact, I should have worn, oh, I've got a New Zealand t-shirt. Um, I should have worn that. It would have been kind of, damn. Oh, the less of that cheese, the better, man. You know, it's <laughs> I have oh, I know oh, I saw a lot of the rings one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have been like that, really, so, yeah. like a pain up the arse to you, but I, I didn't do it. Yeah, Never yeah. mind. <laughs> um, but yes, anyway, sorry. So you're from New Zealand anyway, originally. So um, I guess... Uh, the first question to ask is, what are you up to at the moment uh, in life? And is there anything that's, you know, cool that you, you know, in the present time that you're working on that you'd want people to know about or any cool projects, anything? What's, what's going on, really? Uh, you know, keep us, bring us up to speed. Uh, no, 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 uh, no not, not too much. I mean, the, uh, the, the whole COVID thing's been slightly disruptive for me. Like I was, uh, you know, kind of working, doing the Nomad thing uh, when it hit. And, um, you know, to me, this is really not any point in going on to, to my country so I can't kind of figure out where I'm actually living and navigating this whole situation at the moment which uh, you know is, is can be a little bit dynamic and complicated so uh, you know really for the last year I've been kind of just a little slammed with some of the logistics of that um, but I just recently I've actually even put this out on the 20 year but I just recently started working with a uh, swan swan big one um, oh, nice. so I just have all of those guys and, and have it on the team there so I'm, I'm pretty you know like a couple of weeks deep now so i'm still getting my head around but uh yeah that, that's what i'm involved with uh at the moment and um, as far as other projects go like uh that's hopefully like uh, this is the point where um for me you know ever since i did the um the uh what am i looking for the gotena uh thing um and, and some of the other kind of software that i pumped out you know uh, what, what's kind of been more important to me is just actually getting proficient as, as, a, as a coder because I, if you read, I wrote this article about um, it's called like Learn to Code V1 or something. Like I, I've, I've only really been, uh, I didn't know anything about code uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, so I kind of like just jumped into this quite deeply. And so to me, like I really want to contribute more to the space, but you know, I, I do understand like it's a craft like any other. And you know, if you uh, yeah, I've seen this from music where like if people want to jump in and they don't really know what they're doing uh, professionally or technically, but they just want all the fame or that, you know, that the, the notoriety you ride. And I think there's a lot of people in the space, not so much in the coding space, but definitely when it comes to like podcasts and stuff, you know, that attitude. I, and I think going forward, even though you might, you know, I think a lot of people will see a payoff of it. Going forward, it's not the best attitude when, you know, I think this space is you know, something that people are going to write about the history books for 200 years. Uh, so, so sorry, a long tangent as I'm prone to do, but um, but basically, this uh, what I've been trying to focus on is just becoming a competent developer and uh, eating my vegetables, if you like, you know, about like just getting you know the, the basics of software development down um, before I you know start looking at some more open source stuff. I can log myself in or whatever. You know, so. Uh, Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. So like, you're kind of, yeah, just like reinforcing your confidence in yourself in your development abilities to say, Hey, like, you know, I am proficient at this. I can, I feel like I have the responsibility to tell you guys about this and I'm happier, you know, having, uh, having experienced uh, more in the development world, I guess. That's just pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I, like the way I see this is like, man, this is a, a revolution that needs uh, like a shitload of foot soldiers, right. You know, people mm -hmm. to just, do the plumbing work of the space and that's a whole you know running a podcast um doing the, the marketing or you know there's a million things that we, we just need people uh, to do it right and i think um software especially you know in general there's just not enough developers for the, the jobs that are available in general let alone bitcoin and people that actually understand the space and where it's going and the technology itself um, so you know for, for that reason I, I think like there's a lot of people you know want to like run their own podcast and you see like how many podcasts there are right you know yeah. things like that or well, they want to be that figurehead or that thought leader um when really i think what's more important is uh, to kind of put that in the background and, and just um get your hands dirty when we need it without worrying about like you know what you're going to get out of it so to speak so then i think like if you're if you're a bitcoin holder with any sort of history i mean the the financial side is i think it's, kind of certain now, right? You know, you're going to be, you're going to be rich. <laughs> uh, so, but what's more important is like the contribution that you made. You know, if you look back in, in 20 years, you know, like, well, I did a lot of cool podcasts, but I guess about that now, but you know, if you built the infrastructure that was built on this, and to me, that's more significant. So, so, and, and um, 
when I first got involved in the space and, you know, my background was like the police and teaching, you know, I, I didn't really see where I could fit my skills in, but I just figured, like, I went to a bunch of conferences and figured, well, if I just like learning to code, I can see there's a space there, you know, I knew nothing about it. Um, so that's kind of what I, you know, focusing on, but, you know, as I said, um, you know, it, it's, it's all going to well for people who maybe want to you know, put it all in their bio that they're working for something and they're contributing some open source project and if you look what they're doing, they're just like changing a spell mistake in the, you know, the Bitcoin core repo or whatever, you know, they understand the core developer. I think there's, you know, the, the space will be better off if more intelligent people put their minds to, to something on those lines. And again, it's not necessarily just code, you know, and things like that. But that, that's how I feel about it. And, and, you know, I see this is like a 10 year kind of mission of, you know, it's not just like what you're going to get now, it's what, where you're going to put yourself in 10 years. And, and so to me, the, the software development seems to be the, the best place. So, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, Lawrence. No, um, go ahead. How wait. did you make the transition from police officer to discovering Bitcoin? Uh, well, it's kind of how I came across it actually in the first place was, um, so, you know, I, I heard the name Bitcoin thrown around a few times, like 2012, 2013, I just kind of dismissed it, never looked into it. Um, but what actually really got me interested in the space was uh, in the, uh, following the, the post-trial coverage of uh, Silk Road. And um, so off of that, you know, I read about like dark markets and things like that there. And, and to me, it just really kind of blew my mind that this thing was going on for, you know, well over a year, uh, almost two years, I think it was the end. And that they could see it happening, you know, right in front of their face and there was absolutely nothing they could do about it. And, and I don't think that many people quite grasp the significance of that, like perhaps I did having worked in that field. Um, so, you know, I got very interested in, uh, you know, jump straight on tour and have a look around at times like Evolution and Agora, all the, you know, the ones that were really going around there and, and had a hunt around. And so initially I was just interested in like how the dark markets work, but then I you know, read about Bitcoin as you obviously do when you're exploring that phenomena. And then to me, you know, and this is something, again, it seems so obvious, but it's it's strange that people only really start, a lot of people are starting to grasp it now. It's like immediately I thought, well, if this can facilitate um, a, a criminal market uh, and, and something like the FBI can't stop it, and this is going to be what, you know, nation states use to get around capital controls. Like this is like a nuclear weapon in finance. Um, and so to me, it seemed like, I guess, you know, again, I look at it in a, in a more market value way than, than other people perhaps would just because my background. But to me, I thought, well, this is an incredible phenomenon and this is really going to change the world. And, and, and like, this is like nothing else I've ever come across in my life. This is you know, fascinating. So, so that was kind of what got me interested was, you know, the background and, you know, my professional background, which got me interested in the data markets and then reading about Bitcoin's consequence of that. And that, you know, really that was a neighborhood tour and Bitcoin, the two things that really enabled that to, to work. And, um, and, you know, and, and obviously the difference between tour and Bitcoin is, um, you know, not only is it a way, it's a, like a technology you can use to transact to community like tour, but, you know, the, the side effect of course of Bitcoin is, you know, you might get hilariously rich <laughs> in the process, which I think is a very powerful motivator, which is why Bitcoin is where it is now is, you know, if tour had that, you know, had a coin somehow, and it's, it's not giving too many helpful people ideas here, but you know, if it was a, a financial benefit for downloading and running tour all the time, you know, you'd see that the intrinsic motivation that people have to participate in it would be much higher. And so I think that's why the coin is for it is now. That's a good point you make, Retour. It's like, um, I don't know if you've heard of Helium Network, but that's like a idea where, you know, by by participating, you're gaining, and the, the, the level of growth and the level of people trying to mm. buy these um whatever they're called like their versions of a minor i don't know what it's called but whatever the amount of people trying to buy these is so significant they got a huge waiting list so yeah you can you can see how if tor had done something like that then obviously the the growth would have been exponential compared to what it is um but yeah it's, it's pretty cool to to hear about how you kind of change field like that it, it almost feels like bitcoin's its own religion in a way because it's like you kind of saw this light and then you're like i'm gonna change and just do this now and like it's just yeah it's amazing it's, right it's totally a cult, totally a cult man it's totally a cult a similar thing happened to myself. It just got me out of my job and just poof, like straightly moved me into the into the industry. But I'm happier than I ever was before. So, you know, it's the, the way way to do it. Um, I guess yeah, because obviously, not really a massive change uh, in in topic. But like when it comes to Bitcoin, um, I suppose you can say crypto in general, but mainly Bitcoin in New Zealand. Um, because obviously, you know, it's far far away from where Jerry, myself, or Ricardo are. Um, well over the other side of the, the, the earth, the globe. Um, 
and obviously this it's not a huge population so you know we don't get to meet many kiwis from, from that often um albeit one of my best friends is a kiwi but um what uh what's the situation like with bitcoin and the kind of general ethos and the industry and like the kind of how's the the bitcoin meetups and that kind of side of things in new zealand like how, how is it um in general compared to the us for example so for a start it's a small country like five million people right so mm -hmm. um you know we talk about things like meetups you know the numbers always can be kind of low and the other thing about you know, kind of Auckland, which is the main city which i you know, where i spent most of my life there is you know, the, the public transport and stuff is, is, is kind of really sucks um so it's it's you know the, the social life in general there is is leaves a, a bit to be desired you know what i mean um yeah but uh, i mean meet up the meetups there in the community i think Per capita, if you look at it for what it is, where it is, etc., it's pretty good. Um, uh, you know, I'd say the culture there is, like with many things, is, is, is a bit behind, um, you know, say America or Europe or, or, or things like that there. So it's a little bit um, undeveloped. And, and I got, you know, I'll put it a thing this way like, there's a lot of guys from the meetup, and some of the guys, like I kind of got my first Bitcoins off and stuff, the guys who've been around since like you know, 2010, there's something like some really old school dudes. Um, at the meetups there but then you know you'll talk to a lot of these guys and I guess that's this isn't that different than the rest of the world but uh, you know, let's say for example you know like say Bitcoin maximalism you could say it's a bit of a it's a bit of a trendy thing in a way you know at the moment it's kind of like the, the right thing or things taken over where you know maybe 2015 2016 it was like old coins were kind of the new thing and everyone was into a whole lot of different things and that now that's looked in a slightly different light and so, you know, this, the culture of the space, you know, when you come up with the, the smaller groups like that, or as a general, you know, has evolved over time. And um, I kind of feel like a lot of people there aren't really, you know, not like on Twitter or whatever, and following what's really happening in the space, which, you know, I love it or hate it. And I think if, if you're on there, you, you know, there's a whole world happening much faster than a lot of people in the space realize, and you're really behind the times if you're not kind of plugged into you know, the, the Bitcoin or crypto Twitter kind of world. So it, it's, it's got aspects of that where I think it's, it's like kind of like a little immature and a little undeveloped in a sense. Um, but, you know, there are some encouraging things about like, you know, it's definitely a country where um, if you go to a meetup, you're very, very likely to find someone who is wanting to buy and sell uh, Bitcoin for cash, uh, which is something which I haven't seen anywhere near as prevalent. And, you know, I've been to quite a few meetups, this random meetups in, in, in quite a few countries now. Um, so, you know, I mean, I think that like the culture in that aspect is pretty good, but I mean, uh, statistically, you know, I, like I'm more skeptical of statistics, but statistically, I think per capita New Zealand is quite far behind in the Western world as far as the percentage of like uh, population that owns crypto. And like the on ramps at home are, are quite limited and, um, you know, just uh, yeah, not uh, looking at the international options, they're, they're not that competitive, um, mm. you know, like. Is you get you get some okay rates, but if you're trying to turn New Zealand dollars into, into Bitcoin, it's um, it's it's definitely much. It's a whole other world from say America, which you know, has a lot of very easy um, ways to do it. Uh, so so yeah, I mean the culture there, as far as like the general adoption permission and uh, permission permanent, uh, and to society um, is 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 kind of low, and I think lower than than in the rest of the world. But also like. The culture there, while, while I think it's like a little perhaps behind the times in some ways, I think like what I've seen about the way that people think about it. So it's pros and cons, pros and cons, but it's, it's small. I don't, that'd be my kind of summary. I'm sorry, I lost you for like a second there, but I got the general over. I, I got basically most of what you're saying. So I guess yeah, what you're saying is like essentially it's kind of kind of behind in ways, but then the the core of it and people's like attitude towards it is actually pretty positive and pretty encouraging. Basically, is kind of I guess the yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I think it's it's people are in general New Zealanders are a bit more rough and ready if you if you know what I mean, like a bit more. Um, I'm trying to find the right word for it, not rural, but you know what I mean. They're a bit more like like. Less, less cosmopolitan or something, I don't know. Like, um, uh, you know, I just think uh, people, I mean, from, for example, America, you know, have a lot more of a, um, they come with an expectation of some of the, the services and the, and the convenience that you have in America. Yeah. For example, things like, let's say Uber Eats, right? You know, it's, you have it at home, but it's relatively new. And that was probably like three, four, five years behind, not more behind America. Um, and so I think there's a little bit more of an expectation of convenience, which in my mind is, uh, you know, I think, and I, and I think this will be the case forever. It's like it's, it's, it's kind of uh, a polar opposite of what crypto is about. You can't have convenience and self sovereignty. Yeah, like I'm sure there's a, 
a nice medium to be found there's ways that you can kind of bring those together a bit more but i think they're always diametrically opposed uh, and so people at home are a little bit more used to like just figuring out themselves and stitching it together you know but it's like cliche uh, saying or about them said this, we have that number eight wire mentality which is like you know you figure out how to stitch something together from you know because you can't get it where you are and so remote you know so i think that that mentality is a good one where um you know coming back to the corn base rpo you know i think a lot of the convenience that that uh that the industry is moving towards for obvious reasons because you know that's what customers want um is is very much a double-edged sword and and so i think it's good that like that geographic isolation can kind of encourage some more positive behaviors if you like gotcha yeah yeah oh, okay i get you that's that's pretty cool actually it's, it's good to get like a, a good insight to to the way the community is especially you know for everyone listening because say most people listening probably won't have even visited new zealand um so it makes sense to, to to hear about that um i guess there's a bit of a, a switcheroo but it's something that you did in new zealand uh, and you're kind of known for online obviously and i've got to ask you about it um it's got to be done um I guess, uh, so yeah, I mean, what I'm talking about is um, that you were, I believe, the first known person to send a Bitcoin transaction. I could be wrong, but I'm thinking you're the first known person um, to send a transaction without uh, cell or reception or internet connection. Um, what was the catalyst for that? Like, what made you think this, you know, what kind of gave you that idea is, is kind of what I'm interested in because uh, the how you did it is that is there. It's in your Twitter thread. And for anyone listening, go look at the Twitter thread, CoinSureNZ. It's pinned to the top. But yeah, what was it made you think I'm going to do this today? You know? um, so, you know, I'm kind of a big fan of like Samurai Wallet and their, their kind of approach um, and have been, you know, since well before I, I did this, which was, what was it? I can't even remember now. I thought it was October 2018, I think. Yeah, I, I believe it's around that time. I... So before that, you know, I was kind of following the stuff quite closely and I really like their, their, their particular take on what, what Bitcoin is about as far as how they flesh it out in the end. Um, and then, so as a consequence, I, you know, sort of the extent I think was coming. And um, because of my my background, like I explained, you know, I guess I look at this thing a little bit differently. Where you know, I've got a bit of a streak where I'm being paranoid and thinking about all the worst edge case scenarios that could that could happen. Um, and so, to me, I mean, this is one thing which really drove me to become a programmer. It was like the first things I did when I got a reasonable level of competency was did Jimmy Song's course, and then. Figured out how to create my own transactions, obtain my own private keys from addresses because I just didn't like the feeling of relying on some software where, you know, even if it's open source and well used, that without this piece of machinery, I can't, I don't know how to turn, for example, these 24 words into the address or get the private key. And I've had it, you know, an experience too where um, you've had something to do with the derivation path or whatever, where I was able to get a new TXO out of a, a wallet. Um, so being able to do that yourself is, is something which is, you know, is quite a strong motivator for me. So for that same reason, like the lack of connectivity um, and the potential for that is something where I think, well, what about if the internet got cut off? What about if this, what about that happened? So I'm kind of got a predilection for these kind of uh, paranoid scenarios. So the idea of the text thing you know, really kind of caught my attention straight away. I thought it was really, really cool. Um, so I actually ordered a bunch of go I didn't quite realize when it first announced that it actually wasn't being launched so I bought a bunch of GoTenas maybe two or three months before it actually got released and I had them and had a little play around but not too much of a use for what I was but as soon as it kind of launched I was you know super keen to give it a go and um, so uh, so that, that was kind of what motivated me to, to do it and get involved and from there you know as, as soon as I, they kind of launched it I, I started thinking about a plan to go and get out there and, and really test what the capabilities of this thing was. Gotcha. Okay. So it kind of came from that, um, that thought of, in your head of like, you know, what if, you know, yeah, everything well, shares the yeah. fan basically. And like, you know, yeah. and, and how can I make this as like simple and basic and like manual as possible for if that scenario is to happen? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, from being in the police and the army, you know, they, they teach you about drilling and rehearsing things over and over and over. And so, you know, when this, particular unexpected scenario, you get ambushed or whatever, it's all instincts, right? You know, you, you, you follow this step, you do this, you know, this person wheels around here, you get fire formation, you start people bottom towards the target, all this kind of you carry on, right? So, you know, it's been kind of reinforced for me over quite a few years about, you know, you need to think about all these scenarios and have a plan in place and have rehearsed to know it, 
So to me, I'm, I'm kind of there with backups and other stuff, right? I think I've probably got a little too far about you know, where and how and that kind of stuff out there. So, you know, to me, I'm always like looking for a plan about what if, and so it kind of really fell into that. I saw a presentation that you did where you were talking about how you worked in like a secret service style protection unit for like politicians. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to ask, like, how similar would you, from your background in security, uh, compare like the risks between a high profile politician and a real high net worth hodler? Uh, well, I mean, I cut that off in that presentation, I think, relatively well. I mean, you can go on for days, really, but, you know, I cover the basics. I mean, I think, like, let's be honest, you know, like the idea of there being people with a large amount of money is not a new phenomenon, right? You know, there's plenty of millionaires or people out there that have a large amount of money. You know, at the moment, I'm living in a in a uh, Central American ca country, and, you know, it makes you, when, when you're here, you know, kind of a little bit more conscious about flashing the space of wealth and things like that than you would be, you know, um, uh, at home. So, I mean, I think the idea of, like, just because you get mega rich doesn't make you... And I, you know, this is something which I think a few Bitcoin people are a little bit thinking about. Is like, just because you got money doesn't make you really stick out than the guy who's made a shitload of money out of business or inherited some money from his parents or whatever. The, the real, the, the real point of interest, you know, as far as protection things that goes, is like how easy a target are you, right? Because, um, you know, if, one, if I was to really simplify this, you know, there's a lot of people. Who, if you've made money through business or something like that. You probably had to have some some acumen and some some focus and a bit of a cutthroat mentality to be able to get to that level. Well, not necessarily, but in crypto, there's some people who just like made a smart decision and, and made the same sort of demographic as people with that win the lottery, right? Um, where uh, you're funny and and you haven't really had to go through the experience to to be able to deal with that situation, if you know what I mean. Um, so uh, there, there are similarities, and I think the other thing is that with with Bitcoin, you know, it's it's quite similar to cash. And I talked about like um, uh, that that acronym craved in that presentation you were talking about. About there are certain things which are easier to steal and more desirable for thieves than others. And I think Bitcoin sits in that category of you know versus let's say you've got a million dollars of Bitcoin and a million dollar um, a stack of gold or a work of art on the wall. Just purely on portability alone, like Bitcoin is, if you're wanting to get your hands on a large amount of something and flick it off, Bitcoin is a much more appealing prospect. So uh, there's that, and, and I think it's something which is kind of poorly explored. At the I think a lot of people don't really understand it, but but there's also other things like, you know, to me, that the, the biggest targets are going to be crypto businesses, where, you know, a lot of these places are the security is just like any sort of office when really they should be kind of hard and more like a bank. Or anything you think about like a mining facility, you know what I mean? It's very possible that you could, if, you know, and some of these places are in countries where the rule of law isn't that strong. You could roll in a, a group of guys, you know, mining facility typically has a pretty skeleton staff. You could roll into them on the space and either, I don't know, put a gun to a guy's head and say, change the, the output address or even just physically hook up the assets to, Something, something else, and you know, kind of almost like capture the flag, right? Where you know, just every minute there, you're getting more points, or you know, potentially. So, so um, you know, so there's there's um, there's a lot of aspects like this which I think we, we haven't even begun to look at. But uh, you know, I do think it's also important to preface as much. As I like to say, oh, you know, everyone needs to consult me for my services and pay me tons of money. <laughs> it's really not that different than the world we live in today. There's just some different dynamics because of the nature of how Bitcoin is and, and the people that have come to own it. Sure. Yeah, I guess it's, yeah, as you say, and some people as well with Bitcoin would have made their money extremely suddenly and kind of yes. so, somewhat out of luck as well in a way. So um, for some people, so they might just like, just be so unprepared and it's like, you know, I'm just going to go buy a Lambo and then it's pretty yeah. clear this guy has <laughs> got, got the wealth. Same, same story with, um, with, you know, lottery runners. Like uh, mm. if you read that, I don't, can't remember the statistic of the time I hear, but it's very high about lottery runners that end up broke. Um, and not every saying you're going to end up broke if you do well on a Bitcoin, but, you know, it's just people that aren't accustomed to handling this amount of money. And so they blow it on stupid purchases. And, they, you know, then they get a lot of people coming to them and asking them for money and they don't know how to deal with that because their right. lifestyle just isn't set up for that sort of situation so so yeah you know it's it's it's, it's a bigger thing but i mean like if you're talking about like violence for example i think what's way more likely than that is and this is something i'm surprised we haven't seen more like you know you go to a book on conference and the after party all, all of a sudden it's like super warm and way the league is starting to talk to you 
And, you know, then when you fall asleep, she plugs the USB stick in that her handler gave to plug into your computer. And then, whoops, you know, your Bitcoins are gone. And, I mean, there's a, definitely a few digital fuck ups for that to be possible, but something, you know, you get where I'm going, right? You know, I think that's yeah. much more likely a scenario than someone robbing you at, at, at this stage. Yeah, I, I was actually thinking the other day, like some of these Bitcoin meetups, I think, geez, you know, like some some rough stuff could go down there. Like I, I do worry sometimes when it comes to the meetups. Um, but I, it's just one of those things that the risk is the risk. And, and as you say, lots of people, there's lots of people who have money. And, but you're right about exchanges yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Like um, like I know, I know, I know uh, two, two people who worked at Cryptopia and said that, you know, at the time when that was running, it was just a building essentially. You could just kind of wander in and that was kind of it. Whereas, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've been in my past job to like, proper like, bank locations where it's like, it's in- insanely impossible nearly to get in the damn place, even if you have clearance. Um, and there's these huge boulders, you know, like blocking any access from a vehicle and stuff. And you think the exchange probably has more money than that bank building has in it. Um, so it just goes to show. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I've been into a few, and, and you know, if I had a team of like three guys, you'd be in there, dude, in fucking under a minute, you know, <laughs> fucking door, straight in, go under someone's head, you know, give me the crypto, no, shoot someone in the kneecap and say, well, you know, the clock's ticking. Yeah. Mm. You could have all the good security in place that you that you like, but you know when you pull off something like that, I, I just don't think it's something that people are. You know, banks have systems and things in place for this, and I think like the businesses do. I think they'll, uh, yeah. I think exchanges will catch up uh, pretty quickly, and, and some sort of incident will probably cause that to happen um, quite quite quickly. Mm. Um, I guess, well, I, I'll be changing topic quite a lot with this question, um, but um, when it comes to to Bitcoin and 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 I guess cryptocurrencies as a as a whole uh, on a statement. Um, when it comes to the future of Bitcoin, do you? Because there's something that I find interesting is that like if you look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, obviously Bitcoin serves a purpose, and there's all these other thousands and thousands of coins and currencies and tokens that supposedly obviously serve different purposes. Whether it's you know. I don't know. Well, there's so many different ones out there. Whether if you look at Ethereum, right, it's supposed to be a digital app, sort of decentralized app, supercomputer. There's all these different things, and you can have smart contracts. Mm-hmm. Do you think in the future, with things like Bitcoin, and you've got like the Taproot upgrade, you've got the Lightning Network, you've got the potential RGB upgrade, you've got all these different upgrades coming to it? Do you think in the next, you know, five, ten years, we're actually going to see a lot of cryptocurrencies? erode away as their use case kind of just gets swallowed up by Bitcoin and, and an upgrade or, an, or a layer solution. Do you think we're kind of looking more at like a one coin or a few coin future? Or are you kind of someone who thinks Bitcoin should be the top dog? It's like the main thing, but there are going to be other things that just need to be there for these other use cases. I mean, what's your what's your thoughts on that, I guess? I, I mean, I think like just kind of history being history, I, I think that like Bitcoin only world is, is unlikely mm-hmm. just because there's probably going to be something that finds a niche and I don't know expecting it to be large, but I, you know, imagine there's going to be something which fits some small category, which, you know, for whatever reason, Bitcoin doesn't do as well as this thing. And, you know, and I think it's, I don't know, it's quite desirable to, to, to put everything on Bitcoin. Um, but, you know, the, the question would be then about like, um, you know, and this is what you know. A lot of people ask um, when, when they ask me about altcoins at the moment, because there's a few meetups right in here, and there's a lot of noobs at the moment ask about it. And I, mm-hmm. my take is, um, you know, I think it, sure it's, it's totally possible that something, and let's just pick Ethereum. Let's just pick Ethereum as an example that that could um, find a use case and, and and take off. And you know, I think I'm quite skeptical of it at the moment, but you know, who knows the future could fulfill some role like that. But you know, if you're going to take something like let's say DeFi. Or, you know, the, the lending or some of the stuff that goes on, like are they, for example, right? You know, like uh, you've, you've got some Bitcoin and then so maybe you you transfer it to Ethereum to, to be able to participate in a smart contract, you know, does this thing and you make some money or whatever. What are you going to do with that? You're not going to keep it in Ethereum. You're going to take it out into Bitcoin. And so therefore, you know, these things can exist, but whether there's a monetary use and a need for the token is questionable and what that means to flow on effect is, is the other thing because I mean the, the other real question with all this is um, you know, may, uh, is that the majority of these uh, platforms you know if you think about what's involved in, in getting it to a level where it's used and, and is 
secure and has a you know, network, uh, sorry, um, more adoption from the world. You know, you, you've really, you've got to have some world-class developers that are willing to work for more or less free or, or, or you know, the kindness of the heart or have some smart scheme with like uh, sponsoring developers or grants or something like that there. And you've got to keep that going for, you know, for a super long time, long enough for it to get adoption and probably go through a few cycles of up and down. Um, and you know the temptation of that versus why not just create this altcoin, pump the hell out of it, and sell it, and go sit on the beach of the Bahamas drinking pina coladas for the rest of our life is, you know, I think for most human beings they're going to choose the second thing, right? And and not only that, it requires not just you but like a team of people with continual concentrated effort to be able to turn that into reality. So you know, I just think um, really understand what is required with having a a functional cryptocurrency upon which you can rely on that delivers any of these things it's a very big ask and and for that reason i'm kind of skeptical about whether you know which of these things are going to survive but maybe there is a space for them but can you actually deliver that product using a business model where there is you know no real revenue being generated uh, no real way to kind of um uh, so we're looking for um build the mode around it you know what i mean like a one for example uh, you know i'm not super I haven't really got the time to follow all that altcoin stuff, but like, uh, for example, ZRX, I know, this, has this problem where a lot of people who want to use the functionality just go and fork the coin because it's there on GitHub. You just create your own fork version. You don't really need the token, which, as I understand, is mainly for governance. Um, so, you know, for all these reasons, I think it's, it's, very, it's, it's a big ask to monetize a coin. And, you know, to me, I think the most sensible answer looking at these things in a purely objective fashion is create something, pump it, get a hell of a lot of Bitcoin and then get out, you know? Like Dan Laro, for example, you know, he just keep perpetually pumping these things out and just get more Bitcoin. And, and so, you know, the use case of a lot of the stuff, I think is not really the stated thing. It's just a marketing scheme to get more Bitcoin. Um, and, and to be able to make that, that leap requires, you know, a team of virtuous people with, you know, some very fortunate circumstances perpetuated over time. So for that reason, I think, I just can't see it being very many at all, to be honest with you, that really last the um, thing, especially when more people come to understand, which what I just talked about, which I think if you've spent a good amount of space in the time is somewhat intuitive, right? So hmm. so I don't know, we'll see. I mean, I think I think it's possible, you know, it's like you could, for example, you know, it's possible to run uh, faster than the world speed record, but is someone actually gonna do it and put on the effort and the time to do it? Is there the motivation to do it? You know, and that's the real question. So of course it's possible in theory, but will it happen uh, because of human behavior? And is there motivation for it to take place? You know, much more skeptical about that. Okay, yeah, that's a that's an interesting point. I think like um, yeah, you make a good point actually regarding how easy it is if you're someone you, you, your your key focus is is financial gain, it, it, rather than building something on top of Bitcoin or trying to help out building Bitcoin to make your own money, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to just come up with something sort of market the hell out of it and then just crash out of it get as much as you can and yeah basically cash out in, in bitcoin i guess it's like for me when i first got into crypto as a whole uh, and bitcoin specifically more so um and this is before i logged back onto twitter because i had a twitter account from when i was younger and I, I you know i'd never really taken part in, i didn't know crypto twitter existed quite frankly uh, at this time and i remember in my head bitcoin to me was like a savings savings vehicle i guess like a place to put your savings and also it was it was the currency to me it was like okay well i would hopefully be able to future earn this and then spend this and you know this is the currency so then to me i kind of i loved the idea of altcoins so it's like this is like a gambling thing you know it's like i want to think that might go up and it's like this is kind of like my stock trading if i want to do it and bitcoin is just the currency so then when i remember when i first went to twitter the idea of like i'd never met a bitcoin maximalist i didn't really know what it was so I was like, whoa, you know, like why are people hating on this? This is like a fun gambling thing. But then I guess I then saw that other people weren't thinking of Bitcoin in the same way as I was. Like it's it's the currency, it's the key, it's where you put your profits into. They were kind of thinking of Bitcoin as just like, I'm not interested. I only care about the altcoins and then going into fiat. And so that's kind of where I had to learn to kind of realize what was going on. Because I remember I was like, <laughs> what? And so what you say about people making tons of money and then back into Bitcoin to support support Bitcoin and themselves, Kind of makes a lot more sense to me because that's how i've always seen bitcoin as the the thing the global currency in a way for me like you know the borderless currency um, yeah, it's that like shelling point idea right you know i mean and i think it, it's it's going to be impossible to, to break that now really it is and um 
and and yeah, I mean, I, I just I just think if you've when you know when you're new to the space, all these new things make you know are interesting and, and Bitcoin can kind of seem boring too. Like once you've got over the whole like, wow, where's Bitcoin and you've got some stuff and you start looking at these flash new things that have new kind of flash stuff. And really, you know, I think it's like music or sports teams where people want to have their own little secret thing that they're part of and they're cheering for and makes yeah. them seem, you know, special from everyone else, you know what I mean? And I think that's a very poorly understood uh, thing in this sort of space is the, the power of that. But, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, like uh, I, I, I think um, you, you can, like for, for example, right now, I mean, I think it, who knows exactly how long the, the game music will choose to go on, but right now, you know, you're probably going to make more money out of altcoins than holding Bitcoin right now. And there's a whole group of people that are coming to the space right now and that's their first experience. Mm. But, you know, the, the, like you say about the idea about maximalism is, is I don't think it's necessarily a prescriptive investment strategy. Perhaps it's some way people do it, but it's more the idea of, it's like dollar cost averaging is, is like, it's the idea of discipline. It's like, sure, right now, right now, you probably, if I was to put some money on maybe your fucking shit coin right now, uh, mm. and tomorrow it's probably going to be worth more than Bitcoin as in dollars. But, you know, are you going to be able to exit that at the right time? Are you going to be able to stay out when you get out and not see it, you're jumping out again and then buy at the worst possible time? And a lot of, you know, for most people, the, the answer is no, right? Correct. And so I think like the whole idea of maximalism is not necessarily looking at like the dollars and cents and saying Bitcoin will always be the best place to park your money for any given amount of time as far as the return on dollars, but it's a smarter strategy to adopt, not just investment wise, because, you know, it's just, it's much less diffuse on your energy. Um, you know, most people are not going to be able to train well enough to be able to uh, be profitable over time, this sort of thing, and not lose money. Uh, but it's also, I think, like, particularly if you're a developer or you're interested in space or anything else, you know, a lot of people in space are jack of all trades master enough, right? They read about these things, they can tell you a little bit about this kind of coin. But if you really start to drill these guys about things, you know, is they don't really understand what you're talking about. And like, you know, if you're, you know, for me, I just like to focus on Bitcoin because I think it's the only one that matters. To me, it's the most interesting one. And, and for who knows, you know, maybe pick your shit coin might be like much, you know, much, it might be a much better investment and might do some crazy thing in the future. But I think the risk reward of involving yourself in any, your energy and your time and money and any of this stuff versus the absolute guarantee that's there with Bitcoin is, is just, it's a no brainer. Um, so to me, you know, like I'm only really interested in Bitcoin for that reason because I just think it's it's the, the, the biggest one, but also it's most likely to succeed. And you have got the time to be focusing on these kind of things. I want to master one thing, which to me is Bitcoin. And there's no way, you know, even if you're trying to do Ethereum on top of that, it, it's it's a massive mental effort and requires a lot of time to be able to get there. And so I think for a lot of people, the answer is just pick the thing which is, in my opinion, the best, but also is the thing which is most likely to succeed and just devote your attention there. And you're much less likely to be someone who, who I don't know, put your effort into Aurora coin, I don't know, like, like you know, where, where's that effort gone now? Financially, mentally now, it's, it's worth nothing, right? You know, or very little. Because if you, if you invest that into networking, into uh, technical knowledge, into investing into Bitcoin, right now, you'll be much better off, right? No one knows which which of these other things is going to go and if they're really going to go, but Bitcoin is a surety. So for that reason, I think like maximalism is a logical prescription rather than a literal uh, code by which to follow. It's just common sense, really, mm. really how I'd sum it up. So, yeah. I understand that. I can get behind that as well, for sure. Um, I appreciate that. Um, but I, Ricardo, have you, got any, have you got any questions you want to ask? I don't want to you know, keep cutting you off there. I have one last question, and this will be my last one. Um, I wanted to ask, since not everybody's super wealthy in crypto, what security advice would you give to just your casual crypto user? Uh, so, I mean, I think like if you're brand new, you know, uh, like, uh, and, you know, you got like 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, like obviously on your phone or whatever is fine. You know, do bear in mind that, you know, that 20, 30 bucks in, in a year's time might be worth a lot more than 10, 20, 30 bucks. So you want to think about a hey, backup, even for a small amount is not something you want to take lazily. Um, but, you know, I think like if you're over 500, 1,000, you definitely want to be starting to invest in, in a hardware wallet, you know, so there's the office digital security stuff there. Um, and really that question is also kind of dependent on your net worth, right? Like if you're some guy who's a multi-millionaire, losing 10 grand is probably not something that you lose too much sweat of, but for some people that's a life-wrecking uh, phenomenon, right? So, so digitally, digitally, I mean, I think a hardware wallet is the most obvious thing that people should invest in. They should invest their time in looking at 
for example, reading the Bitcoin.it uh, wiki on privacy and get the head around that very dense document, but it's something that everyone should read and try and digest and progress towards as much as possible. So ideally running that um, hub connected to a full node, uh, you know, uh, and some like to some APS or Spectre or whatever it might be. Um, but, you know, so, so that's the digital side, which is, you know, very well documented. And I think, you know, there's plenty of things you can read about that. It's talking about the physical one. Um, it's, it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an aspect of our Bitcoin, right, which is, you know, this whole low time preference sort of thing, right, about, you know, being, not investing in dumb flashy shit like uh, an Aston Martin uh, or, um, or, or bits and pieces like that. It's thinking about the future and that this money is going to be with us significant amount more in the future. So think about what we spend. The same thing, I think, approaches uh, the, the culture of the way that you, you spend your money and you advertise your money and, and what you do with it in regards to that there where, um, you know, like we talked about with the lottery winning and the temptation for a lot of people who get um, rich out of Bitcoin and, you know, just happened to me, you know, let's go out and buy some new computer, new leather jacket, a new set of shoes or whatever, and that kind of thing there. Um, and, you know, financially, that is perhaps not a smart decision for other reasons. But the other one is, like, be careful about how flashy you are and what you're advertising and, and kind of the, the not, 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 not simply because someone is going to see your stuff and rob you, but a lot of these people, and this is very true of, like, lottery winners, you know, the great example is, like, if you watch the uh, O.J. Simpson documentary, I highly recommend that where he ended up. And so if you fall into the wrong crowds, like, if your your idea of getting getting rich is, is partying heaps and doing these coke and whatever, you know what I mean, you're going to attract people which are more likely to take advantage of you or that are not... Um, for the lack of a way to put it, stable individuals, if you know what I mean. So when you're thinking about, like, what you do with Bitcoin as far as what you... Uh, there's the temptation to buy things that are flashy and that can attract the wrong people to you and, and to be aware about the, the company you keep, but also um, what those psychological drives are going to do for you, right? Like, again, someone's won the lottery, um, they've potentially gone from being nothing, you know, like a, a nobody into someone who has access to all this kind of stuff there. And if you haven't examined your behaviours, your, your urges, they can lead you into places where you're going to be taking a farmer job physically and, uh, and, and otherwise. And so I think the same thing would apply to people that are doing well with crypto is be aware of, um, you know, the first thing you might want to do is go on some big trip and throw a lot of money out, but be aware where this is pushing you and have a clear idea about what that world you want to go to is. Because if you don't have direction for your life, other people will push you. And, you know, if you're not driving the ship, someone else is driving it for you. And, and that, I think, is one of the biggest security risks is people that uh, are deriving their um, sense of self-esteem, if you like, from the attention and, and, um, uh, and uh, acceptance of other people. And that can lead you into a very risky place um, you know, psychologically, but uh, we're talking about what you want to hear as far as your physical security goes. So that kind of, that's it's a bit of a long, waffly psychological answer, but that's kind of one of the best pieces of advice I think you could give people is think about, you know, you, you've, you've just won the lottery, what is the world you want to create examine some of those urges that you have and where they're going to lead you and think about what the downsides of some of them are because it can be you know it's quite a sugary rush right when you're in that world and, and if you haven't planned for it and got disciplined about it that uh, those emotions can lead you to some um, to bad places i don't agree enough with those answers man <laughs> like uh especially it's like the whole try like i guess like living within your means a little bit and and kind of like living less than what you and try not to sort of be a show off and, and get in the wrong crowds and just spend yeah. for spending sake, try and do what makes you happy, try and do what puts you towards the right path in your future. And I think yeah, that's pretty good advice. Mm -hmm. Um, because there is so much more than just where do I put my crypto? Uh, there's so much more to it than that. Um, like as you're saying, if you're in an area that's not as safe as maybe I don't know, a super wealthy area of America or London or England or whatever it be, um, then you don't want to walk around with a gold Rolex on your wrist and <laughs> this is basic stuff. Or like a t-shirt that says, you know, I heart Bitcoin yeah, with like yeah. chains of Bitcoin, like gold plated <laughs> yeah. or anything. It's, it's just common yeah. sense, you know? Um, so yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, really good advice. And it goes yeah, beyond and, the what. And they can just lead you to a, lead you to a, you know, not, not just the thing in and of itself, but if you, get there and you realize it and you feel, well, I don't know what I want anymore, you know, and you, you kind of have this emptiness inside, if you like, you know, that's when you're quite vulnerable to, to some of these um, nefarious characters, we'll put it that way. So, so you know, it's, it's kind of Anthony Robbins sort of shit, but, but it also has a, 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 a physical security um, element that flows out of it. So yeah, it's something for this point to consider.
No, I like that. Um, no, I think that's a that's a good that's a good kind of like closing uh, ode to people. To be honest, it's like, hey, security is more than just where do you put it, and it's also like how you are as a person as well. As it's, it's a state of mind, dude. It's one hundred percent state of mind, and it's a worldview about looking about the world, and that's where it all starts. Is the assumptions and the beliefs that you have, how they flow up to your actions, and again, this is sound a little bit woo woo -y, but that is something that they really teach you in all these organizations is that it's about building the mind and the mentality of someone that can never get the stuff right and everything else flows from that so it's a more thing to consider oh, i like it thank you um well yeah i guess um i'll i'll hit us with um we just do normally like a little outro of like I don't know, it's like 30 60 seconds of just some good news to leave everyone listening and us on a positive note, um, random good news doesn't even have to be crypto related. Um, so I'll read that out for everyone. Um, and then uh, we'll obviously say our goodbyes to people. Um, but before we do, I, I say I, I really appreciate you coming on, uh, Rigel. It's been awesome to have you here. Um, Thank you. Thank you. The Thank first you uh, first New Zealand national on the podcast, I believe. Um, <laughs> trying to think of any other firsts, but um, probably the first full stack developer on the podcast as well, I think. So there's many firsts here. Um, so I really appreciate you coming in and it's, it's been awesome um, to chat with you. So thank you so much. Um, and also awesome. thank you. Thank you to the listeners as well, obviously for listening in. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll hit us with the good news uh, so we can leave. So uh, first off, Japanese doctors have performed the world's first living donor lung transplant on a COVID-19 patient. A new brain cancer immunotherapy has shown promise this week in human trials with most patients having seen no tumor growth for three years. The endangered rhino population in Nepal has grown by 16%. On 10th of April, uh, Jersey Mike's has donated 100% of their sales from 1,900 stores to charity in their biggest day of giving in 11 years. Archaeologists have discovered a 3,000-year-old Egyptian city left as if it were yesterday. Uh, a Girl Scout who survived cancer has broken a record selling 32,000 boxes of cookies with all proceeds going to ch sick children. Uh, Chinese scientists have unveiled a new fabric that works like a smartphone screen, uh, with it possibly being used for first responders and motorbike riders who could show a map with the brush of an area of fabric on their arm. And lastly, Hollywood legend Dick Van Dyke has been handing out money to struggling people standing in line for jobs. So uh, congrats, Dick. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Roger, for coming on. Um, just buy Appreciate Bitcoin. Thanks, earn in Bitcoin and spend your Bitcoin. Let's get the circular economy going, everyone. Take care. See you later.